What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery. In today's cultural exposure, we are going to talk about languages. Now, everyone has a language. Everyone speaks a language. Every language has their own unique a uniqueness to it. And I personally believe that languages are beautiful. You know, you... I met a lot of people who speak different languages. I met people who speak multiple languages very well. I, I once know a young lady who spoke four languages fluently plus sign language. She was a translator at the UN and we used to work together in Washington DC. And it was cool to see her talk to people in different different languages, even in sign language. She even she even knew some of the sayings that people will say in their own in that that particular culture, and it was so cool that I I learned like she she was she was Thai her family's from Thailand, and I wanted to learn she, I wanted to learn how to speak Thai, so she taught me some, and I think it is I think you can learn so much about a person. If you just get to know them through their language, a lot of people are, a lot of people have insecurities and hangups about, oh, somebody speaking a different language. But even though it's a different language, you will also find out that it's not really all that different. You know, all languages have a root. All languages have a root, a root language that you probably know of. For instance, you have what's called the Romance languages. Which is usually Spanish, French, Portuguese, all that stuff. But they're called the Romance languages not because it's all about love and all that stuff. No, it's actually because those Romance languages have a Latin root. Okay? They have a Latin root. And those languages derive from what is now known as Italy. It wasn't called Italy back then. So you have... And that particular place is known as Italy. The capital is Rome, R O M E, or Roma, R O M A in the actual language. So when that, when that particular area started conquering lands and doing trade, it wasn't all about conquering. We also had, you had conquering, you had you had business. You know, you trade this, and we go different lands and do trading. You learn languages. You gotta learn language. Like if 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 you speak. If you're doing the, the Silk Road, which went from Italy all the way to China, it'd be foolish for an Italian not to know Chinese. You're going to do business with him. I believe Marco Polo had to know, had to learn the language over there. He was traveling there. He went he went to Mongolia. He had to know the language. If you don't, you can't do business. If you don't know a language, you can't you can't connect with the people there to do business, to do trade. So the Romance languages. It, they were called that because of Rome. Rome was was the head. So the Romance languages. Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese. These languages have a Latin origin. That's why you can hear certain words in one that sound the same in others. You know? Or you may hear words that sound like you hear words in English that sound like you would in that language. So it's do you have the Germanic languages, the, the Slavic languages? All these have a particular root where they come from. Okay, you have like a Swahili, which is one of the what's one of the most widely spoke. I think it's like either seventh or fourth most spoken language in the world. It's an African language. You know, you have English. You have, well, back then it was the king, but now it's the Queen's English, the Queen's English. But then you have American English. Then you have broken English. It's all English, but they've all evolved into their own little language, their own little, own little, little spot in the lexicon. You have, you have like you have Sanskrit in uh, from India. You have. Kanji, you know, yeah, 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 but they all have they all have similarities. Like, there's no coincidence that 
the script from Japan looks almost identical to the script in China. Or the script in Malaysia looks the same. Was um, The script in Malaysia or the script in Thailand looks almost identical to the script in India. Just look it up. You, know, you, have, you have this Semitic languages. You have Hebrew, Aramaic, Amharic. Amharic is the language of Ethiopia. But if you look at the Hebrew language, they look very similar. The Arabic language. The Arabic language looks like Kashuni. Those who don't know that's a that's an older language. But they all have their all have their roots. And I've always been interested in different languages. You know, I knew people who spoke Spanish, so obviously you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna pick up Hola Como Esta, you know, stuff like that. You're gonna meet people who uh who says, says we may we may say we may say croissant, but in French it's croissant. So these things matter. So when you're exposed to different languages, your brain opens up. You no, know, you 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 hear things differently. You can tell just by certain words being used what the general conversation is about. And even though you may not be able to speak it fluently, you kind of know what they're saying. You ever had that before, where you couldn't you couldn't write a language but you could speak it, or you knew what a person was saying, but you couldn't you couldn't really read it. You had, you had to kind of like take some time with it, but you knew what they were saying just by certain words you heard. Yeah. So those like, language. In different cultures, and it, I've always found what I always found interesting is the origin of words, like where words came from, what was the original use of the word before it turned into how we use it now. Like in Latin, how like what what was what were they thinking when they used certain words to describe something? Cause that's all words. Our words are pretty much words are. <laughs> Were the tools used to describe what is in your environment, and you can only have words for things that you normally interact with. So, if, like, oh, like the story, like the story of um, the word kangaroo. Now the story is when Europeans came to Australia, and they met the indigenous people there, and they and they saw this. Big giant th animal with a tail hopping, hopping the, on the ground. These foreigners asked the indigenous people, "What do you call that? Like, what is that thing hopping around? We we've never seen it in Europe. Where we come from, we don't have this animal. So, what do you call it?" The story is the indigenous people they call them the Aborigines. They called that animal. They they, they well they didn't call it. They said the word kangaroo and it kept saying and the, the 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 foreigners kept saying what is that and the indigenous people kept saying kangaroo what the foreigners didn't realize is that those people were actually saying the word kangaroo means i don't understand you so in the native in the native language that they spoke in australia what is now known as australia i'm pretty sure the indigenous people of australia did not call it australia but what they did was they responded by saying kangaroo which literally meant i don't understand you so while the so while the aborigines were responding saying i don't know what you're saying i don't speak i don't speak english you don't speak aborigine so you're asking me in my in in, in your language what do you call something and i don't understand what you're saying so i'm going to say kangaroo which means I don't understand you. The foreigners took that word and said, "Oh, they must be they they is it's, it's kind of hubris. It's kind of arrogant to think this." Saying, "Oh, they must be saying that that animal is called kangaroo." So for all this time, every time you go to the zoo and you see this little you see this this animal hopping around on two legs with a pouch, with this marsupial hopping around, and some kid says, "Oh, that's a kangaroo. Remember, they're actually saying, oh, that's a I don't know what you're saying. Think about that. So, that's cool. 
just talking about the origin of words and how words came about and you know how how actual words from some places actually trans transfer over to others. Like in Spanish, you you have a word kimono, but we know it's a it's a Japanese word. Kimono is a Japanese word, but that word also finds itself in Spanish. Go figure. You have also um, you have Aleph, which is in which is Amharic, which is also in Hebrew. It's the first letter of the alphabet, Aleph. Aleph with the second letter is Bet, second letter is Gamel. But also you have in the Greek alphabet Alpha, Beta, Gamma. And that system transfers into English because the Russian alphabet, the German alphabet, the Latin alphabet, the Spanish alphabet, the French alphabet all have the same setup. All have the same setup. Then you go to the English that has A through Z, just the, diff the amount of languages. Greek has 24 lang the Greek alphabet has 24 alphabets, the English alphabet has 20 26. But the but the letter setup is still the same. The Greek alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet got the same setup. So these these languages, these alphabets transfer from place to place to place. And we don't really we don't realize how intertwined they are in everyday life. Like you have alphabet. Alpha beta I left bet. I just went from English to Greek to Hebrew and Amharic. So that shows you how much intertwined they are. You have un, uno, one. Do, dos, two. So I, they just all mean the same thing. I just gave you one and two and three different languages. French, Spanish, and English. So these things, they, they, all, they all mix together. You know, languages are intertwined. I just find it very cool how different cultures come up, come up with their own system of explaining nature to them. It's, I just find it very interesting. I find it very cool. And I, believe that, I believe that everybody should learn a language. Other than their own, I I believe, I believe it will open your mind up. I think when you take the time to learn a different language, you will realize how similar everyone is just by the way they speak. You will know hearing certain words like, "Oh wow, this sounds like this word. This sounds like this word. Oh okay, yeah, that's cool. We we're, we're we're more similar than we know. And even, even our differences, we don't we don't we don't trip over our differences because we know okay, it's the differences are but so small. They're, they're so small. That it is not even relevant to what's going on. You you find yourself thinking about how similar you are. Your parents probably act the same. Your grandparents act the same. You probably got siblings who act the same as the other siblings from a different country. So, it was all the same. Yeah. Cultural exposure through language is a beautiful experience. Everyone should experience a different culture through their language. Alright? Peace out.